TheDailyMass.com. Experience the Roman Catholic Mass from historic St. Louis Cathedral every day on TheDailyMass.com. His love anywhere in the world. I'm Sarah McDonald. And I'm Jason Angelette. Welcome to Issues in Faith. Well, tonight we have some guests and a couple packages, actually, that we're focusing on because we wanted to show our viewers how so many ministries are putting their faith into action. Yes, the corporal works of mercy and how important we're called, all of us in some capacity, to put forth our faith in action. That's right. And it's, you know, we talk about teenagers doing service hours and people giving community, but it's really as Catholics and even as Christians, it's more than just service. It, right. it, it's it's a spiritual dimension to exactly. it. Exactly. It's not just um, a matter of doing nice things, philanthropy. It, it has to be infused with the love of Christ, um, that the person who gives the food to the poor, the hungry, um, has to be Christ in that moment to that, that person and allow them not to experience a physical experience of uh, satisfaction, but in, in a sense encounter Christ in a very powerful way. It makes me remember our interview we did um, with Deacon Steve Ferran and That's how right. as Catholic Charities and the ministers of Catholic Charities, we are Christ's face enhanced people. That exactly. We're exactly. Well, and as the drought and famine continue on the Horn of Africa, Catholic Relief Services is asking for donations to help aid families in crisis. It is reported that Africa will need $103 million to properly care for all of those affected. Catholic Relief Services, the International Humanitarian Aid Organization of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, has established a special fund to raise money and awareness of the plight of African families suffering from the record drought conditions. To donate and for more information, go online to www.crs.org. The 21 youth, World Youth Day pilgrims from New Orleans will depart from Madrid on Saturday. We're asking for people to keep them in your prayers, but also wanted to remind everyone that those at home can still experience it thanks to social media. The USCCB has created a Facebook application and a website for non-Facebook users at www.virtualworldyouthday.org where individuals can create an avatar and use it to participate in the virtual pilgrimage and the New Orleans Pilgrims will be blogging about their trip on a blog available at www.archdiocese-no.org. And the Louisiana Conference of Catholic Bishops is asking for people to contact Health and Human Service Secretary Kathleen Sibelius to let her know of the concerns Catholics and other Christian groups share about the narrow religious exemption and the new health care mandate. To send a message to Secretary Sibelius, go online to www.lccb.org and sign up for Voter Voice. For over 150 years, the St. Vincent de Paul Society has been at work in the New Orleans area to aid those in need of basic services. The organization truly allows Catholics to live out the corporal works of mercy. And tonight, Sarah sits down to talk about one local parish's contribution with Laura Finnegan and Hunter Harris. Well, thank you so much, Laura and Hunter, for being with us this evening. I'm very excited to hear about the work uh, of your St. Vincent de Paul ministry at Good Shepherd. Well, we're excited as well, and thank you for having us. Oh, no problem. Well, a lot of people don't realize um, that Good Shepherd Parish, originally St. Stephen's Parish, has a very strong connection with the St. Vincent de Paul Society through the Vincentians. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the Vincentians started the parish in like the 1850s, and they maintained the parish, and they were the ones also who um, created the St. Vincent de Paul Society and so it just carried on for now 150 years and just recently and I'd say in the last 10 years or so I think that the Archdiocese has taken over mm -hmm. the parish and it mm -hmm. became part of the Archdiocese. It was always the Catholic Church but it was ran by the Vincentians. With the Daughters of Charity. That's right, because the Daughters of Charity ran the school Correct. and the Vincentians operated the church parish and, right. and served as the, as the priest. So there is a very strong connection there. So this has been a very long ministry at the parish that kind of got a, a jump start um, when the name change occurred and people did come in. And, and Hunter, I, you know, Monsignor Nolte actually sent me a note asking me to thank you for your work in bringing the uh, St. Joseph's Altar to, to Good Shepherd. He, well, he wanted to publicly thank you for that. Well, St. Joseph's altar was, was a very special thing for me. Uh, we had it at Good Council, our later Good Council's mm -hmm. church. 
And when the merger came, there was a lot of bitterness, and uh, I, for one, uh, I knew I was going to have my St. Joseph altar. I just didn't know where we was going to have it. Mm -hmm. So we decided we was going to have it in front of the church on the sidewalk. And one senior said, Hunter, why don't you have it here? And so I said, well, if you accept us, we'll have it here. So we did, and it went over good. And uh, it wasn't quite the first year as big as it was previously at the concert. Sure. But it was very heartwarming this year because when we started at St. Uh, Good Shepherd's, uh, St. Stephen's, we had maybe, I don't know, 15, 20 people that came along with us to do it, mm -hmm. and very few from Good Shepherd's. Mm -hmm. And now we've done three there, and last year when Father went around to bless the food in the various places, that the kitchen that uh, we used to cook in, in the rectory, with standing room only. We had all the people that, just to help us, not people attending, mm -hmm. but just to help us. People was actually in the hallway, and when Father came out, you know, he was very excited. And I was excited too, I'm not gonna say I wasn't. Oh, I'm sure, that's a because, big tradition to keep um, going. you know, the, the people's come, come and it's there. And we, we have a pretty good size altar. We feed around 1,200 people on St. Joseph Day. Wow, and that is just one episode. You're feeding 1,200 people, part of the community, members of the parish, but the St. Vincent de Paul Society is working around the clock, 365 days a year to feed people, to care for people. You have a new kitchen that's been renovated at the yes, parish. Tell us a little bit about those things going on. Well, we had a, uh, a donor that gave us $10,000. It was after the first St. Joseph Day there that uh, we could renovate the kitchen, which we, which happened. You know, we got a commercial stove put in, uh, commercial sinks and what have you, and it just makes work a lot easier. Oh, sure. And, uh, but the St. Joseph Day is not just for the homeless, that's for everyone. Everybody. Like, we actually put a sign out on the neutral grounds, all welcome, come join us for St. Joseph Day. Well, Laura, so what are some of the other things that you do besides providing meals and sacks? What are some of the other things the St. Vincent Paul Society does at Good Shepherd? Well, we um, assist with electrical bills. We assist with rental assistance. Um, we have a food pantry um, that people can come Monday through Friday. We offer snack packs, but they're only offered mon on Mondays and Fridays from noon, nine to noon, excuse me. Um, but if a family needs a packet that you can get two to, one to two good meals out of it, red beans and rice, grits, something substantial. Um, our parish is very generous. We can we have a poor box or they can donate through uh, an envelope and we use those monies to assist with the rental assistant and to purchase food for the food pantry. We also do food drives and our, again, our parish is very generous with you know, donating their food items. And with the St. Joseph altar, if people do make donations, those monies go into our, our account to help assist with the poor. Well, and it's such an important ministry. A lot of people don't realize that, I mean, you, you see the homeless encampments under the interstate and, and this, that, and the other, but people don't realize this is a problem throughout the metro area, and parishes like Good Shepherd are really making an impact on individual people's lives. Yes. yes. Well, you know, we, we take and ask people to take and stay within their parish perimeters. Mm -hmm. Like our parish perimeter is pretty large. We go from Washington Avenue to Leondis, from the river, or Chapatulas, mm -hmm. to St. Charles Avenue. So that's the people that we primarily take care of. You know, uh, if somebody comes looking for food, no, one's ever turned no matter away, where they it. come from, <laughs> we're there to help them to the best of our ability. Well, I wanna thank you so much for the work that you do through the parish and galvanizing the parish to be part of the ministry to help the poor and needy in the area and um, really putting the, we said in the intro, you know, the corporal works of mercy to practice in the parish. So thank you so much for your ministry. We'll continue to keep you in our prayers and uh, let us know if there's anything we can ever help you with. Okay, thank, well, thank you very you. much. Well, when we come back, we'll focus on other ministries in the archdiocese that are putting their faith into action. This is Issues in Faith on LAE.
Hey, check this out. It has a camera, it has wireless, it sends text messages. And it could send me to jail. In a 2008 study, it was estimated that 20% of teens have electronically sent nude or semi-nude pictures or videos of themselves. Sending or receiving photos like these could result in child pornography charges and other consequences. Parents, please take time to talk to your children about what they send and share with others. For more information, visit www.archdiocese-no.org. When it comes to your children, stay informed and stay involved. I'm here today inside historic St. Louis Cathedral, a place where WLAE has broadcast the Daily Mass for more than 25 years. A recent PBS ruling ensures that this valuable service will continue on WLAE for those looking for daily inspiration, and for the many who are homebound or in our area hospitals who can't attend Mass. But in order to continue to provide the Mass every day, we need your financial support now more than ever. I'm asking you to please consider donating today we have numerous partnership opportunities available. For as little as $32 a month, you can help fund the televising of the Daily Mass, a program that lifts the spirit and enriches the lives of so many of our viewers. And for a donation of $50 or more, we will send you this beautiful signed poster of St. Louis Cathedral as our gift. Please send your contributions to WLAE TV, 3330 North Causeway Boulevard, Metairie, Louisiana, 7002, or to donate online, log on to WLAE.com and click on the picture of St. Louis Cathedral. For more information on partnership opportunities, call 504-866-7411. At WLAE, we've worked hard to keep the Mass on the air. Now we need your financial support to keep it going. I know that you'll help us if you can. Thank you and God bless. At the food bank this summer, when things got hot, they got into the kitchen. A brand new kitchen partially funded by Catholic Charities. This state-of-the-art facility has opened a lot of doors at the food bank and helped them feed a lot of hungry kids. As Janet Gross tells us, they whipped up more than 100,000 meals just since June. This is not your ordinary food bank. Chef's gonna need somebody for gravy in a minute. Okay. It's now so much more than canned goods and boxes of pasta, and Catholic Charities help make it possible. Good. This new $2 million state-of-the-art kitchen is the present and future of Second Harvest Food Bank. They still do the staples and canned goods, but this summer they also prepared and sent out breakfast and lunch to thousands of hungry campers. Kids who in many cases really missed getting those meals in school. Last year we did five sites, 16,000 meals out of a um, uh, borrowed kitchen, and this year we did 35 sites, over 100,000 meals. Thanks in part to money from Catholic Charities, they don't have to borrow a kitchen anymore. It's 8,500 square feet, and we also have a 1,000 square foot um, exhibition kitchen where we can teach people how to cook nutritious meals. From the huge walk-in freezer. <laughs> it's cold in there. Chilly. Three below. <laughs> to the brand new multifunction oven. We begin by uh, cooking uh, all our food in this beautiful combi oven. This is a state of the art uh, electric. Uh, it can heat, it can uh, be a convection oven, so it can do all things at one time. This is a true production kitchen, right down to the packaging. Even though this newfangled wrapping machine brings back some old fashioned memories. 
I feel like right. Lucy. <laughs> this is uh, fabulous. I mean, this is a chef's dream, actually, if you think about it. I mean, state-of-the-art equipment. Um, we're doing a good thing for the community. We're feeding hungry children. They follow government nutrition and safety standards, but they want it to taste great, too. Don't serve something you wouldn't eat yourself. So there's a lot of taste packed into these packs. We try to get away from chicken fingers and chicken McNuggets and, and all this fast food that they, you know, we know that they have on a regular basis and try to explore them and introduce them to things they never had. We do a chopped steak and a mustard, uh, let's say, black pepper sauce. If, you, if, you, if you're down the French Quarter, that's called a poivre. Well, that may be true in the quarter, but at the summer camp lunch table, they use a more familiar language. Taste. Mm. It's good. <laughs> yeah, good. And actually, not just good. Oh. Dreamy. <laughs> it's dreamy. Huh, that's just what the chef said about the kitchen. A kitchen that can pack up as many as two million meals a year to feed the hungry. Now that's dreamy. I'm Janet Gross for Issues and Faith. Now that summer camps are over and school is starting, they will shut down the kitchen for a few weeks to fine tune things. After that, new projects, including the possibility of after school meal for kids and kitchen education program for adults are all in the works. Hey, check this out. It has a camera, it has wireless, it sends text messages. And it could send me to jail. In a 2008 study, it was estimated that 20% of teens have electronically sent nude or semi-nude pictures or videos of themselves. Sending or receiving photos like these could result in child pornography charges and other consequences. Parents, please take time to talk to your children about what they send and share with others. For more information, visit www.archdiocese-no.org. When it comes to your children, stay informed and stay involved. I'm here today inside historic St. Louis Cathedral, a place where WLAE has broadcast the Daily Mass for more than 25 years. A recent PBS ruling ensures that this valuable service will continue on WLAE for those looking for daily inspiration, and for the many who are homebound or in our area hospitals who can't attend Mass. But in order to continue to provide the Mass every day, we need your financial support now more than ever. I'm asking you to please consider donating today we have numerous partnership opportunities available. For as little as $32 a month, you can help fund the televising of the Daily Mass, a program that lifts the spirit and enriches the lives of so many of our viewers. And for a donation of $50 or more, we will send you this beautiful signed poster of St. Louis Cathedral as our gift. Please send your contributions to WLAE-TV, 3330 North Causeway Boulevard, Metairie, Louisiana, 7002, or to donate online, log on to WLAE.com and click on the picture of St. Louis Cathedral. For more information on partnership opportunities, 
Call 504-866-7411. At WLAE, we've worked hard to keep the mass on the air. Now we need your financial support to keep it going. I know that you'll help us if you can. Thank you and God bless. For more than five years now, they've been working to make things better, to help people come home. Catholic Charities Operation Helping Hands was born out of Katrina, and since its inception, it has rebuilt 200 homes and painted the exterior of another 450. The volunteers who do the work continue to come from all over the country to play a major role in the return home. Janet Gross takes us to the celebration of the completion of Home 200. It's the last little bit of straightening up before the celebration. It's a homecoming for a family that has been trying to get back since Katrina. I am so happy. They did a wonderful job. Mary Roberts, her husband and her parents will be living here again. When the storm hit, it ruined this house, but restoration came through the hands of a group of young people. All of the red shirts you see, they're volunteers with Operation Helping Hands, a Catholic Charities program that started right after the storm. Some 30,000 volunteers have come here to help this program put people back where they belong. You didn't just do it because of the Roberts family, but you did it because you're doing it for other purposes, a higher purpose. Thank you. So on behalf of the mayor, thank you very much. May God bless you all. Thank you. This works done almost completely by volunteers. We have to hire out the electrical, AC, and the plumbing. But the rest is done by people from all over the country, as well as our AmeriCorps who are here for the long haul for a year or two at a time. The group in charge of this house got the job after contractor fraud left the family without money or a home. It's the 200th home rebuild for Operation Helping Hand. It's an answer to a prayer for Mary Roberts. I am so excited. Last night I was like twisting all night knowing that we was going to be here today to see the work that was actually complete. I am so excited. It's been a journey, but we're home now. On this day, the celebration was for all of the people who've come home thanks to Operation Helping Hands, a support system of faith and works. We focus on the elderly and disabled because they're the most vulnerable. And so, so often what's happened with the elderly uh, they trusted a contractor they didn't know after Katrina. Uh, they gave their money away with little monies they had. Then they had nothing. So as Catholic Charities, as the Catholic Church, we step in behind folks who've been victimized lots of times and help them rebuild. Um, this is actually my last week working with Operation Helping Hands. Um, I'm ending my AmeriCorps term and it really has just been the most unbelievable year of my life. For those who give their time, they get so much in return. It makes me feel like a human. It, uh, it, it's better than any other feeling that I feel like I could get from having a job that primarily makes me money or ha you know, ma makes me something I can put on a resume. It makes me feel like a part of a community and that makes me feel real. And that's one key to this program. Everyone wins, from homeowners to helpers. That's our roots in this country. We, we build b barns together, we build communities together, and so uh, we're brothers and sisters uh, across this country. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, all of you, for your support, and, and God bless you, and God bless your home. And all I can say is I'm just so happy. I'm just filled with so much joy. It's just unbelievable. God, I just... I, I don't even hardly have words to explain how I feel right now. All I can say, God is good and thanks for the Catholic Charities. We're home. Thanks to a bunch of strangers. Ready? One, two, three. Don't move. <laughs> strangers, now friends. I'm Janet Gross for Issues and Faith. Since November of 05, Operation Helping Hands has spent over $14 million on area homes, money that comes from the Archdiocese supporters and federal, state, and city grants. They hope to continue at a pace of doing 40 homes a year as long as funding holds out. And if you have a question for us or have an idea for a story you'd like to see on air, write to us at Issues in Faith, 3330 North Causeway Boulevard, Suite 345, Metairie, Louisiana, 70002, or email us at questions at wlae.com. Plus, if you miss an episode, you can catch up online at www.archdiocese-no.org. 
And that's our program for this evening. For all of us at Issues in Faith, thanks for watching. We'll be back next week. Hope you join us again soon. Until then, God bless.